Our second company is Crystal Edge Technology Screens, the comeback. Um, I'm showing you my setup. This is my under $60 projector setup. Let me show you what we have over here. So that's the performance on the screen. The screen paint we're using is our professional Black Cinema One. That's the new black technology we developed. And over here, this is all I'm using. This is a $37, well I paid $37 for my Optima uh, portable projector. It's around 2,800 lumens. I thought it was 3,000 lumens, but at 2,800 lumens, 600 by 800, uh, 600 by 800 a res, 720p SVGA. And I got my little speakers, computer speaker system set up to it, uh, hooked up to a battery pack along with my fire stick and adapter, and that's basically about it. And that whole entire system cost me under $60 to set up. This is what I'm telling you at the end of the day, when it comes to our technology, you do not have to spend an arm and a leg just to get an amazing image. Sorry about that. You do not have to calibrate. You do not have to be stuck in dark environments or none of that nonsense at the end of the day. And as you can see, we're in a fully environment. Plenty of light in the environment hitting my screen. And we're going to sit here and enjoy my fish and animals while I get ready to move my system on this side and get ready to start priming my walls on this side to get ready for my giant screens I'm going to put in here pretty soon. But that shows you exactly how amazing our technology is. We don't have to have expensive projectors. We don't have to calibrate. We don't have to use ambient light controlled environments as in faking the environment by peppering it out with lights. Let's do any of that. Get up in the morning and turn my projector. I'm using this projector for the last couple of days. Call it my mini theater setup. And that's how beautiful my image pulls up at 720p, 600 by 800 res, SVGA. Cats over there watching the big cats. All right, I'm gonna take this whole thing apart. You guys watch that. I am in here taking apart my equipment so I can transfer it over there so I can paint my screens over here. And I gotta be up to date for a few things. You might wonder, John Legend, how do you keep your voice sounding so light in here? I'm going to grab my remote controls and make sure I have that on hand. What is that? And this is what I'm talking about. This is a simple, easy setup, as I said before. And the reason why you see a lot of expensive projectors on screens, because again, expensive projectors are going to be needed. It has to be used because again, without those projectors, the screen is going to look absolutely crappy. So you're going to have to be in the dark with these other screen paints. You're going to have to be in have a calibrated projector because your colors are not going to come out correctly because again you're using a projection screen that does not work and then on top of that like i said you're going to spend a lot of money for a projector you have to put back contrast you have to put back color something that your projector is not going to be to do because your screen is failing when i can get up in the morning on a projector system that i set up over here that costs me under 60 bucks Now these projectors, the ones I'm using, the Optima, you can get those projectors, I think I saw a couple of them on eBay. What's this going to? That's the power cord, that's where that's going to. I saw a couple of them on eBay for like under 50 bucks, they're not expensive. These are on power cords. Don't touch that, don't start licking it. Don't ask me why people. Tyler's been licking the equipment, I don't know why, it's weird. Yeah, 
Ne cesten kalıyor yok bunu bekleyin. Ne açın en yok değiliz. Kutun ya. And the reason why we do these demonstrations is because, as I said before, people that are shopping for screen paints and projection screens are used to seeing the rehearsed environments. Overpriced, expensive projectors, calibrated machines, that's what they're used to seeing. This is how technology and ambulant rejection technology is supposed to work. It's supposed to be to turn your lights on and the screen's supposed to function. You gotta adjust lights. If you're being told you have to be in a controlled environment, that means the screen doesn't work. And it's taking out ambulant projection. Put some animals on. He likes watching the animals when he comes in. Keeps them nice and calm. Doing weird stuff. I kind of told you that I have other business adventures that I'm working on. I love doing screen paint, which I really do, and I will continue to do it, but I do have other business ventures that I'm working on and other investments coming up this summer. And you'll get a chance to see the new website, which has nothing to do with screen paint whatsoever, and I have a few partners that are tied in with that. So that was a, that's going to be an interesting partnership. I'm actually going to be partnered with four chefs. That's going to be fun. to do on this particular new project coming up a lot of research that just dawned to me how would you basically pertain it to one particular section because you don't want it to go global or something like that not yet so i think they can have a little talk with some of my business advisors about that particular area right there and how that would even work i'm so excited something something new different adventure something new oh by the way we have now opened up and activated the Crystal Edge site. And thank you for the orders for that site too. I do appreciate it. Those are our comeback screen paints. These are screen paints that we removed and again, customers didn't get a chance to, get a chance to experience those products. The 2.0 is back on the site. Just had it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, be careful about leaving the remote control down. I did not want to hear that all day. Yes, need that right there. Turn over. That's exactly it. Okay. Let's disconnect this stuff. into the desk.
surprised he's not in here. Check it out. Probably standing out the window. See, I'm not really have to pay any mind to the screen. This is me every day. I don't have to monitor the screen, worry about whether the contrast levels come on, worry about the environment, if there's too much light in the environment, worry about the projectors. I don't got to worry about that in that sense. Nope, I go about my day. And just watch the screen just like a TV. You don't have to do that with the TV. You have to go in and worry about the environments and all that stuff when it comes to a TV. Just turn it on and you watch it. That's how it's supposed to be with projectors. And again, this is my under $60 setup. Oh, penguins. Ah, you can see our white levels. Now, this is the screen paint you're seeing right here. This is the Professional Black Cinema One. This one is going to be mainly, we're going to have it online, but it's going to have a lot of displays offline in the showrooms. Because like I said, this is one of the blackest technologies developed. It's a 44 professional that was converted to a 48. This thing is absolutely amazing. I got one in the next room at 159 inches. And this thing is absolutely beautiful. Cannot wait till we set these up in the showroom. These are the ones that take in the most impact because the screen's solid black and people are not used to seeing them. I used to get that all the time. We used 720 peeps all the time. We used to get ridiculed for that. That um, you shouldn't be using 720 peeps as the projector that's unworthy. 720 peeps work perfectly fine. If your screen can't operate on 720 p there's something really wrong with your screen. You should be able to operate at 720p and it should look amazing on your screen. They still make them, by the way. They don't make, yes, they do. They still make 720p projectors. Even in venues, they still make them. Very good projector. The problem is that the screens can't do them. Screens have not caught up to the projectors yet. contacting me about projectors I do from time to time well we do that from I told you how I don't like it when people contact me to pick my brain I can't stand that more than anything in the world those are the ones that we call the fakes we know who you are when you contact and call we've heard your speeches before if you contact me and your sole purpose is act like you have an interest in our product just to waste my time so you can pick my brain for information to fix the problem that you can't seem to work out on your own i will basically not only hang up on you but i will also to deny you from ever buying a screen paint from me ever again i don't appreciate that kind of nonsense i really don't you can't figure out your own problems that is not my problem my job is you're going to pay me for my time but other than that i am not here to basically try to help people how to build their projects now, if you purchase product from us, yes, I have no problem with that. But if you're calling me up to do something that deceitful, no. And I've had that happen to me a few times. People will contact me because they can't figure out how to do it, and they'll pick my brain for information. It's called Google. It's best that you learn it yourself. If you learn it yourself, then that way, at the end of the day, you just knowledge should be obtained, instead of basically trying to steal it from someone else's brain. Or something. We get that a lot with the ceiling projection screen paints. Not this right here. We mainly get that with the ceiling projection screen paints and the floor. We get that with the 3D mapping technology. We have people contact us and ask us about this and what kind of projectors are we using, uh, how the projectors are positioning, um, what kind of, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, animation or um, a software that we're using. These are the questions that I said that come up that we know that at the end of the day they're just picking for information. Because they'll talk less about the product and more about how we did it. That's how we know. So I just answer back by, what do you think? Because again, you're wasting my time. If you're not interested in my product and you want to pick my brain, then no, uh, I'm not into that, okay? I got things to do. I'm a very busy person. And the sad thing about it is, no matter what projectors you choose, you're still not going to get the same thing we're getting over here because you don't have our technology and then you're banned from getting it. That works, it doesn't. And no one likes to have the time wasted. 
Some people sit there and say, oh, but that's not right. You're a business. No, I am. A, yes, I am a business. But nobody, and even in business, most of all, wants their time wasted. customers that I have to take care of. I got projects that I'm working on. I got projects that I'm working on other than screen paint, which I literally can't talk about because I'm in an NDA. But actually, the only thing I can say is that I'm actually working with four chefs. That's all I can say. I'm under NDA. I'll tell you what we're working on, what we got, nothing. sit here and we do these demonstrations we can talk about other stuff we don't have to focus on the screen the screen does its own job what do I have to say about it we're in a fully lit environment we're on a $60 setup it does its job I can talk about something completely different while you guys watch so I'm back here arranging my equipment putting it over here to get ready to get these giant screens done get them primed gotta be at home people today too get these areas primed so I can come back in because this screen you won't see it anymore. Get them primed, or maybe tomorrow I might do it. I don't know. But get them primed and get them ready for the giant massive screens. I want my immersed set up. I do. I see it every day. There's two screens colliding together. Me going into interstellar. I want to go into interstellar outer space. That's the first thing I want to display. So we got the ceiling done, and we're going to get these two corners done. I can set my projectors up and I can just whoo, submerge the entire room in. Now the floor, yeah, I hate this rug so much. It's just carpet. We're gonna be changing out the floor. So the same padding system you see in the next room is going on the floor. We're just gonna do the outside areas, that's it. And in the middle, I saw this cool illustrated, uh, get, like a galaxy kind of rug. It's beautiful. I'm buying that. And I'm going to actually put light traces of UV paint and certain areas of it, we're going to put a nice glow blue and that'll get the rug to activate into this really kind of cool space age kind of galaxy design. It's going to be pretty cool. We're going to do a tutorial on how to do it. I did a tutorial showing you how to basically uh, maximize your UV paint. There are certain pigments that you could buy off of Amazon to maximize that. And you mix that in with your regular UV and that gives it that long lasting glow effect. Because the ones they sell you on Amazon are nice, but the, the glow effect, it doesn't last that long. And it's really dull after a while. The stuff that we show you how to make, oh, that stuff is going to be super bright. It doesn't take much to trigger it off. It really doesn't. Some of them require for you to charge it. Like this right here. See that over there? That painting is actually painted with the homemade uh, growing a dark UV paint or the enhanced UV paint. That thing boop, glows perfectly with no problem. Let me show you something. You're gonna have the lights on this section right here. A little dark in here. I can't see it too well. But yeah. See how it glows nicely? Right there at nighttime, even more. But that's what we're gonna put down on the floor. I should just make my own freaking floor design. Honestly, to tell you the truth. But I want something soft to walk on. That's why I'm doing the rug. The rug's all black, has this like solar system, and we're gonna just trace lightly the areas, and we're gonna basically allow our rug to be able to glow and come to life. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, we can't do lights, so I'm working in here. I got to move stuff back and forth. So, like I said, it's the reason why it's important that our products work under ambient light rejection because I can't be in the dark moving stuff around. It's not going to work. I got to be in a fully lit environment when using this stuff. That's why it's important. The technology is ambient light rejection technology. There's another good point right there. Because right now, I'm in here moving all my equipment off my desk to put it over here. And I can't be in a dark environment when doing this. And I do want to watch my screen at the same time. So 
my customers can go out and buy a product. Let's see, saving you money. It's $474 for the technology right there. My projector costs $37. I can get it for under 50 bucks if I want. The adapter on the back is 15 bucks to allow me to be able to run my fire stick with no problem because I'm not, it doesn't have HDMI on the back of it. And my speakers cost me 10 bucks. That's it. So again, for those people who have to use those high and expensive projectors and be in dark environments, number one, you gotta be in a dark environment. You can't be in this environment, it won't work. Number two, you're gonna spend money, a lot of money for a projector to fix what the screen can't do, especially a projector with an expensive amount of contrast, sorry, very high contrast level, which is going to be expensive. I already heard that from the horse's mouth when I talked to the uh, fellow over at Val. When he sat there and said that, well, black screens, it doesn't exist. I didn't pretty, I didn't entertain any more of that. And it all comes down to the projector, not the screen, the projector. And depending on how high your contrast level is on your projector, depends on how well your contrast level is going to produce. It all comes down to the projector. That's what they believe. On our end, we don't believe that. We believe it comes down to the screen, as we're showing you right here on our under $60 entertainment setup. I'm going to jazz it up a little better over there, too. That's what it comes down to. And keep in mind, the sad thing about it is, even when they say it comes down to the projector, I still see nothing but YouTube videos, rows and rows of YouTube videos of people trapped in dark environments, poor, poor color, poor contrast, on overpriced projectors. Where have you saved any money? I'm $60, under 60 bucks. Then I go to show you right there that that's the reason why our product saves you money. Not only hundreds, thousands of dollars, because this technology can knock out certifies. There you go. When I see those different shows that they have, they pick the most expensive, most advanced projector they can get their hands on because they need to have the best picture they can possibly have. We don't have to do that. This is my setup I've been using for the last couple of days. As a matter of fact, I've been here more than I've been out there. I like the setup. I like something that's simple at the end of the day, you know? The fact that I don't have to spend all this money like everybody else, and I can be in a fully lit environment. That's what I like. I think I'm going to explore these portable projectors. They really don't support, I'm, I'm, I'm explore them enough. Let's check out something else. Um, where the freak is the remote control again? Oh, I keep losing this thing. Let's go with um, 8K, 8K Earth. Hey, buddy boy. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you better move on. You, static, and my freaking computer don't mix. Get over there somewhere. I don't care. Go to your window. Go to your window and stop arguing. That's uh, the manager. I got to figure out a way how to get him to wear the tie. Like, he fights me every step on the tie. I don't know how people... At the end of the day, get clothing on their cats, or they're not supposed to have them. It was funny anyway, but I don't know how they do it because my cat will kill me if I try that nonsense. Can't even get the bow tie on him. He'll get in the bubble bag. He likes the bubble bag. He likes the carrier, all that stuff. Because he gets in the carrier, he's going. He's going, he's going to see his aunt. His aunt, um, his aunt. So he's happy about that, and his uh, his grandmother. But other than that, um, nah, he don't like wearing the clothes. So you're doing the question mark tail again? His tail bends like a question mark. Hey, 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 I can't be in here watching you 24 seven, man. You gotta stay away. You don't mix too well with my equipment over here. I'm moving my equipment here. No, cause you're a jerk at the end of the day, Doggo. You were definitely a jerk. Yeah, that's what I want. But you, 
The carpet, static electricity, and my computer. Yeah, that's a perfect combination right there. Because these fries could be happening. Can you imagine if animals, well, animals do have jobs, but can you imagine if animals actually literally had pockets with money? Oh, I'm sorry, I wrecked that. Here you go. Let me fix that for you. Here's the money for that. That'd be fantastic, but that's not possible. Where do the animals do make money? This one doesn't. Not yet. We're getting tacos out of the exotic collection. We're going to get ready to start showing off three of those. And one of them we're going to be bringing out is taco screen paint. So if Taco's paint goes toward proceeds. It actually goes to donations for the SPCA. So we can have other animals out in the did a good job with the team. I'm always going to go to the team. Now, for those who have been waiting for your order, you are taken care of. We've got some supplies in, so you're good to go. We always get our orders out, always. I tell you, most difficult for me to actually ship out orders was in the middle of COVID. At ne almost near when they start, it wasn't COVID. We made good money in COVID, made extremely good money in COVID. And that was a blessing. Thank you for the customers. But it was the process of getting the supplies in. Oh, man, that was an absolute crazy nightmare. And just trying to get packages out the door. Postal workers were overworked beyond belief. I'm not going to understand some of them at the end of the day didn't want to take the packages, but we were paying for them through United States Postal Service. And there were times where I had to turn around, I had $800 worth of, I'm talking about shipping costs, you know, shipping costs alone. And they would basically not pick up the packages. And I had to turn around and take an additional $800 out of my pocket because before a shipping station didn't exist. And shipping station is amazing because if I void an order to make a new tracking number, I get that money back in my account like in two days. But without shipping station, you had to wait something like 21 days. That's 21 days without $800 take an additional $800 in my pocket to get the packages shipped out. And I went through some stuff. I had to, at one point, one of the guys drove past the house and stopped. I had to get dressed, run out the door, catch up to him, and tell him I had packages there. Until I prayed, I prayed on it, prayed on it, and the Lord sent me two postal workers that came down every day, even when I didn't have packages, parked the truck in the driveway to pick up my packages. People are saying, I go through a lot for my customers. I go through a lot to make sure your packages are out the door. I spend a lot of money to make sure your packages are going out the door and being taken care of. You know, for a person who was supposed to be a thief and stealing from my customers, I sure do spend a heck of a lot of money and shipping costs. And one day I'm going to show you what I literally pay in a year for shipping costs. It is insane. I didn't realize I paid that much money. It's a lot. It is a whole lot. But yeah, you know. I pay for all free shipping. We were doing it overseas, but right now the overseas is going to be on hold for a bit. We got to figure out what they want and territorial rights on those contracts. So that's why overseas is on hold. So they figure out what they want. But I'm not worried about, you know, the naysayers, I'm not worried about the haters, and the reason why, I'm a happy man every single day. Number one, my Lord protects me. And number two, we're, oh man, really I'm glad I wasn't eating anything when I was watching that. But anyway, number two, we're going to court all this year, and I'm so happy. I'm finally gonna get a chance to see these people face to face, and I'm finally gonna see my, they're gonna, probably gonna have my day in court to get all this mess cleaned up and get rid of these jokers. And whatever nonsense or, hatred they feel about me at the end of the day, they can explain that to uh, my attorneys and the judge. And let's see what you have to say now. That's what I'm happy about also too. And I told you before, you know, and they just can't, they don't make anything new. No product line. I told you it was going to be no product line. Nothing at all, period. I told you it's going to happen. They can't do anything new. All they can do is just hate on other people. That's all they can do. And that's why there's so much jealousy. I remember one time I got a text from the other one and he said, oh, you must think you're God. Why? Because I can develop technology just like that? No, I don't think I'm God. I serve God. You got to mix it up. 
There's a difference there. When you serve him, God will bless you. And this is the reason why you guys can't go any farther. You don't have God's blessing. I can sit here and have this conversation on my $60 setup. I want to see if I can do one lower than this. That's $60. I'm going to do one much lower than this. But yeah, you know, you don't have God's blessing. I'm so glad when I get my giant screens put in. I don't even know what I'm going to watch first. I wonder if this wall is the same size as the one in the other room. That's what I'm curious about. Look at him on the floor. He loves watching animals. He's His, he has, there's a show that comes on. I forgot the guy's name. He does one of those wilderness shows he goes out there he's in i think he's in london england it's a lot of rain where he's always doing these demonstrations he's obsessed with that show to sit there and just watch it for hours i don't know because he has a dog on there or just he just watches it for hours you come in here sit here the manager will come in here and expect the screens and that's what he's doing he's expecting the product to make sure it's working perfectly fine that's what he's doing right now call him the manager just to make sure everything has been done right and by the book. So yes, Taco this summer is going to have, he has his own screen paint. And that screen paint is going to go to help orphan dogs and cats and anything else at the SBCA. We're going to donate all proceeds to the SBCA. I think Taco would love to have it that way since Taco was a homeless cat when I got him. Helping out. Now, with the other new adventure that I'm working on, which I'm under NDA with a couple of chefs, can't say much what we're doing, but I can say that we are going to be also to with that donating money to feed the hungry. Things lined up this summer. I'm going to do a couple of food drives. I think we're doing food drive. I want to start a food drive. understand how we can have all this food and there are people who do not have enough to eat. Don't understand that. What will you do? I tell you, the most disgusting thing I think I've ever seen in a human being I've ever seen I remember watching a guy walk over a man. Expensive suit, briefcase, expensive shoes. A homeless man is sitting on the ground and a man walked over his body. Gee, where's the ladies? You call yourself human? You're far from it. they're better than other people because they have money. Interesting newsflash. In God's world, you're just equal to the beggar. When the time comes, the beggar will end up going to heaven and you won't. All your riches, all your money, everything you have will be left on the earth and you can't touch it anymore. I know people that are rich and have money that are very generous and very nice, very kind-hearted. Those are wonderful people. The rest of them? Yeah. Some of them, they don't do that yet. Where are you going to? I'm trying to figure out which goes to the modem so we don't plug that and disrupt the video. Yeah, I know people that have tons of money. And they're very kind hearted, very down to earth, very nice people. And I know people have money that are just selfish, greedy, and they believe that they run the world. The funny thing about it is, they're miserable. They're always miserable. Always complaining about something. Always miserable. Money can't buy you happiness. Okay. Yeah, it's so weird. As the 
is just here for the time being until I paint. Um, as I said before, I hate wires. I'm tired of them. I can't stand them. So I want the entire system to be wireless when we install it in. So over here, on this side of the wall, we're going to put a shelf system in. We're going to drop all our speakers in there. Wi-Fi boosters, whatever we need in that section right there. So I need a booster. We need one here. I don't know. I'll get one anyway. So we'll have everything here. I'm going to put my cloud sofa here. I saw the radiator cover, so I'm going to be covering that up so it looks a little nicer. Now I'm going to get burned on it while I'm laying on my, my cloud sofa. And we'll put a nice straight curtain across here so I can cover up all this. Because I'm going to be to slide it back and forth to get to my bag. But also, I'm just going to figure where I'm going to hand my bag up too because it can't be there. I'm probably going to get me a bag stand and put it somewhere, probably in the hallway. Probably going to put my bag stand in there. But I'm just going to drape my curtain across here so I can cover this section. And that section make it look real nice. And then we're going to set up our two screens here. The commercial is going on right now. Uh, get rid of that commercial. And then we're going to have our huge screens here. And we got the ceiling done there. So that's what we're going to be doing in this section right here. And we're going to have all the keyboards and stuff. We're going to be completely wireless. I want everything wireless in here. That's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, I had to disconnect the modem. So I'm going to go in the next room and put my jazz back on, which was on. Oh, yeah. Update your contact info today with Pennsylvania Medical Assistance. Okay, we don't have enough to do that. All right, I'm going to put my jazz back on in the next room. Gee whiz, look at these wires and cables. This is freaking horrendous, man. You guys gotta be kidding me. Gee whiz. 
So I will be picking up a PS5 while I'm here. But, anything else? No. My people came down yesterday and were like, gee whiz, you haven't bought a check. No, I have not bought a check. I haven't bought any dishes. I bought one towel. I haven't bought a shower curtain. I haven't bought nothing since I've been here. I, I like it here. It's okay, but it's not what I want. You know, I only just, I'll tell you the truth, honestly, I came here and got the apartment because I needed to figure out exactly how this area worked down here. I'm not going to rent a house. House is very expensive to rent out. It's a lot of utilities. It does cost more money than an apartment. So, let me figure out exactly what this area has to offer. And then when I find something I like, I'll go out and I'll get it, which I did. I found a couple of storefronts while I was out of here. This gives me a chance to save a lot of money because what I spent for renting houses, I could spend anywhere from my monthly cost, would cost me like $5,000 easily. With heat, electrician, all that, houses eat up a lot of freaking power. And on top of that, a lot of heat, especially where I burn heat. I burn heat all the time, like constantly. So, now, end of the year, since I already know this area so well, I am going to basically start renting out some storefront property and looking to get a house. But, now nah, I haven't bought anything. I only bought what I need. I'm just using this place for work. That's basically about it. Now, some people are saying, oh, you're such a snob because you don't want to be in No, I don't want to be. I've been in houses the entire time. That's me at the end of the day. Do you like to be in the apartment? That's your thing. And that's your thing. Enjoy. But that's not for me. You can't expect me to like what you like. And I can't get you to like what I like at the end of the day. But I don't. I'm not used to being in an apartment. I'm used to being able to walk upstairs, downstairs, into a basement, out to a backyard, into a front yard, in a driveway. That's what I'm used to being in. So that's where I'm going at. Except for this time. I haven't really decided which way I'm going with this. Like, I could get land, which is much easier out here to get land. I get out four or five acres to myself. Gee whiz, I've seen this already. I just realized I just saw this video already. Four or five acres of land, and I could build me one of those luxury tiny homes, which is weird. But then again, with the luxury tiny home, even though it's smaller, probably about a thousand, I bet a thousand square feet tiny home. I like them because they're cozy, but at least I got a huge massive backyard attached to that. And I got, yeah, I got a backyard still bigger. Well, it's not bigger, it's kind of interesting. Kind of a bit of a conflict back and forth, but I, I'll figure it out later on. Let's go over here. I'll figure it later on. It's kind of weird. It's kind of confusing because you want to get out of the apartment because you want to be in the house. But you have to understand, it's also too about control. In a house, I control the entire house. And here, I only control a section. So it also has something to do with that. You just have more freedom when you have a house. Even when you're renting it, you have more freedom. Even though I can come in here and do the exact same thing I did in the place, I can paint my ceiling if I want, I can paint my walls if I want, whatever I want, I can do the floor, whatever. As long as I put everything back the way it is, it's Gucci. But other than that, um, with a house, it's just more freedom. You have control over the entire place. And that's what I like about having a house also too. But I think I'm going to do me probably about, if I do a tiny home, I'm not doing an itty tiny home. I'm going to do, I like the small ones. They're cute. I love them at the end of the day. They're pretty cool. But I'm probably going to do probably about a thousand square feet. I've seen a thousand square feet tiny homes. But I want, if I'm doing that, I want four to five acres of land. I don't know. Or I might just do both. I might just get a big house and a tiny house. So that way, you know, some days I want to be in the big house, I'm going to be in the big house. And other days, I want to be in the tiny house. I'm going to be in the tiny house. I haven't decided yet. Okay, there. Land up here is easy to rent. It really is. Like, I can get about five acres if I basically, uh, what do you call it? You can lease the land for five acres for $1,000. As long as you make sure that you figure out exactly what your taxes are going to be, because you do have to pay the taxes at the end of the year. A lot of people realize that when they look at um, ta uh, leasing land, that they think it's just you're leasing the land. No, you literally are responsible for the taxes at the end of the year. So make sure your taxes are pretty reasonable. If not, that'll cost you. It'll cost you good. And a land lease is not like your everyday lease. You don't sign it for one year. Signed for a couple years, which I like about that too, also too. 
because the owner, at the end of the day, if he decides, you know, that he wants to basically, uh, that's what I like about two on top of that when you think about that. Even after three years from the land lease, if the owner decides that he wants to basically do something with the property, it's best to have a house that you can basically pick up and move from A to B. That's what I like about the tiny homes because those things are completely portable. And I was talking to a friend yesterday. She said, well, how are you going to live out there? I mean, there's no, there's no plumbing. There's no electricity. There's nothing out there. It's just an oasis of nothing out there. And I said, that's where we get into the battery systems of solar power, of power, I'm sorry, solar power and you get into water harvesting and all that stuff. That's why I've been researching all that stuff. I don't have to live without basically paying people for their services, which I hate to do. Back then, you didn't have to, you had to go out and you had to get all these dry cell batteries and you had to hook them up to a converter and all this other stuff you had to go through. Now today, with EcoFlow and these companies that are coming out with this new technology, Two of these, uh, what, they got the ones actually hired in Delta, Delta 1300s. They got them now where you can actually plug them directly into the hot box. You can power the entire house off a battery system that runs off solar. And keep in mind, as the solar is running, as it's basically charging up, it actually runs your house at the same time. You have to turn things off to wait for it to charge up. You can actually charge while the solar power is basically powering the batteries at the same time. Freaking unbelievable. Because at first when I was looking at battery powered homes, I was looking at probably like, at a basically not being able to use my overhead lights. That's why I had that strip of lights in there in the hallway, because I was see if I could find strips of lights that were high enough to generate enough light for me to basically brighten the house. But now, since they got these new systems out, you can plug it directly into your main box and power the entire house off the grid, which is freaking amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get myself 13 of these units. I don't need them, I just want them because I'm better safe than sorry, I'm one of those people. And I'm gonna have a unit, a shipping container that's gonna have like a huge casing and I'm gonna have it in there which keeps everything nice and cool and temperature control, all that other cool stuff and I can have a backup battery bank that's gonna supply extra power to anything I need. And I'm gonna run my house completely off the grid. As for water, well, if you research anything on water harvesting, some people, what they do is they put in their reserve tanks because, you know, you put your backup reserve tanks in and then you put your rain catchers in. They catch all that rain that comes from the heavens, goes into your uh, unit. Your unit basically takes all that water, puts it to the reserve tank, and that water from there can be dispersed in anywhere you want. Any water going through the house goes through a filtration system that actually cleans and purifies the water. We can actually drink it. Where do you think the water comes from that sits in the dam that you paid money for? It comes from the, uh, the sky. So I was talking to somebody about that in the forum site, like literally water is now the biggest scam on the face of the planet. You are literally paying for something that reason why you pay for water. People say, well, you got the convenience of had to pump through your house. You can get a system to do all that at the end of the day. If you're saying because the water has been purified and allows you to drink it. Well, that's a big joke because most people basically buy bottled water anyway. They don't drink tap water. And the other half has some kind of filtration cleaning system to clean the water that comes out of the spigot. So what did you just pay for? There you go. So you're literally paying for a company to clean your water when you have a system attached to your spigot to clean your water. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense right there, doesn't it? And then some people, like I said, they pay for Deer Park or one of those companies to come out and deliver water to the house. Or they buy stacks of bottled water. Wouldn't even drink the tap water if their life depended on it. So what did you just pay for? And every day you walk outside and it rains and it's free rain. It's free water at the end of the day. That's what I realized. That's what clicked in my head one day when I was sitting there watching it rain outside. I was paying a water bill. Now back then, yes, when water was pure, when it was less poisons in the water, and basically you could drink from the tap. There was a time when you could drink from the tap, a long time ago. Can't do that now. Then you paid for your water being clean. Now today, just about everybody has a filter on their taps. Unless you live up in the mountains somewhere and you got clean water coming through. Other than that, everybody has some kind of cleaning system for the water. Some of that water is even dangerous to wash in now. It's bad for your skin, it's bad for your hair, it's bad for everything. So what are you paying for? And then every day you got all that free water coming from the sky. Just a little bit of knowledge, you'd be surprised. Doesn't take much.
people who live near streams, you have absolute free endless power sitting right next to your house. I have a friend of mine who's a stream, runs right past his house. Do you have any idea what you can do with that? You ever heard of hydroelectric energy? Very easy to get. As a matter of fact, if you're going to do this, saying some people say, well, with that way, yeah, you can run it easy that way. Some people say you need about a 20 foot drop in order to power that particular generator or actually that turbine to get it to move. But actually, I've seen people with, um, with basic rivers that can move a turbine with no problem whatsoever. Depends on probably what you're constructing and what you're building. But that's free power all day long, all day. You can literally run your house, house of hydroelectric energy. That's why I love this. It's one of the things I love to research more than anything in the world. Free resources of power. interesting it was free when it started off I mean I got no problem paying my bills at the end of the day my bills are cheap here they're extremely cheap I pay about 30 bucks or 40 bucks in electricity because I'm not running all the equipment I run at the other house that's my electric bill it's 50 bucks that's it I have no heat bill my heat is free here so I don't pay it either and as for my uh, water bill well you know you do apartment water is free also too so that's it that's all I pay in bills but I still don't want to pay anything at all. I don't want to pay a dime. I don't want to pay anything, especially when it's free. There's nothing beautiful than watching things power off free. It's beautiful. Actually, I ran two of my computers when I was testing out that EcoFlow system. I ran them absolutely free. Free power. Man, I tell you, nothing like it. Well, God gave it to us, and man figured out a way to charge us for it. Yeah. He was smart enough to figure out how to take that power and how to turn it into a profit. Just like we're smart enough to take that same power and get it for free. The technology we have now today makes it so much easier to do. Just have no idea how easy it is that free power. And I love when people say, well, if you get solar panels, and yeah, solar panels are pretty expensive. You can just go with the battery system, I would, any day. But you go with solar panels, you say at the end of the day that you're really not going to see your money come back i guess if you're doing installments yeah i can see about that if you're doing it in payment installments then whatever money you're going to save on your energy bills is going to go towards your installment so you really wouldn't see too much of uh, any money but if you pay for them in full yeah then you'd be definitely would be seeing a, um, a comeback because the money that you would be paying for your energy bill would be going back into your pocket You guys are probably thinking like, wait a minute, why is this guy showing the projection screen and I'm talking about screen? I told you at the end of the day, I don't have to go through all that. I don't have to get on camera and explain so much about the screen. Once Mr. Bird drifts off into a whole nother conversation, that's it. The screen pretty much is doing its job. It's doing what it's designed to do. It's supposed to work in a fully lit environment. It's supposed to operate on a very cheap, low projector setup, which we have over here in the demonstration as we're proving. We're not calibrating, we're not stuck in dark environments, none of that at the end of the day, it's just plain. And I can sit back here and untangle my spider web of cables and wires while you guys watch the screen and we talk. This is what I do, I'm showing you exactly what I do when I get up in the morning, if I'm working in here, I turn on my little setup over here and I go watch my screen. I'm gonna disconnect all this crap. Oh, I tell you one thing. Dude, I haven't caught up on anything on the PS5 at all, period. But do they have their own VR glasses? Because I tell you something, if you're using those same VR glasses that you have now with all those cables and wires hooked up to it, I'm not touching that. I hate that thing so much. I mean, it's good. I can't say I hate it so much. When I first got it, I liked it. I loved it. But the wires on it, gee whiz, Louise, there's so many freaking wires. This is why I was leaning toward the Quest, most likely because there was no wires. <laughs> but eventually, with the Quest, you will end up with the wire attached to you because you have to hook up that data cable so you can hook it up to your computer. So that way you can run it through your Steam um, um, account so you can actually play more games because your gaming library and the Oculus is pretty weak. Pretty weak. And at that, a lot of the games are pretty much made like the Wii U. They are. If you're looking for hardcore games, forget it. It's not going to work. 
And on top of that, it's a 720p system. You're hooking it up to a computer that's going to do 4K. So good luck with that one. I was laughing about that one time. The guy was like, "We well, can have this." This is why I love about the the Quest system. I'm sorry for the casual gamers, but you guys are interesting to talk to. I'm not trying to put you down or anything, but there's some days that you just need to just sit and listen. Because we had this conversation, and the uh, what do you call it, the big screen mode, where everybody meets up at in the Quest system, and they were talking about, "Yeah, but you can get more games. You can hook it up to your gaming PC, and you can actually um, you can you can game off of that, dude." You have to understand, you're running at 720p, and you're probably running at the 4K graphic card. How's that going to work? You're literally going to downgrade your 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 um, your graphics because you're running it through a VR system that can't support 4K. Better off just buying a system that can support 4K, then you can actually see what you just paid for when it came to your graphic card. You spent all that money for a graphic card, and you really can't use it on that level. So, yeah, that conversation was interesting. Didn't think about that one, did they? Well, still, all in all, you still have to have a cable. And then it has a two-hour battery lifespan on it, which is also, too, you see people on there just just figuring out all kinds of contraptions on attached battery banks and all kinds of stuff, just trying to get a couple of hours out of it. And in the long run, after two hours, you're still hooked up to some kind of charging unit so you can stay online and play. So to a cable, this is one single cable, not 40,000 cables attached to the PS system. Which, like I said, out of, out of, out of, the, out of all the ones I've had on, that would be the most comfortable system. I think the Halo system was the most comfortable system ever. The Oculus, on the other hand, you had to buy attachments to get that one to work. Because when I first bought mine, all the weight was in the front and was putting pressure on my nose and it was causing me headaches. So I had to buy this thing called, and they call it a Frankenstein kit. That's literally what they call it. Um, I think I got one around here in a box somewhere, but I'll show you what it looks like. It's like a hundred bucks for that bad boy. And then you got to buy these plastic attachments that connect onto the side. It was never made for, uh, the Oculus was made for a complete system. I forgot this VR system was set up for it. But anyway, and you pay for those, they're like 25 bucks. So you're about a good couple, 115, 16 bucks in the hole. But at least what it does is it's a heavier strap. It connects onto the back. It pushes the glasses up. And you don't feel like you have all this pressure being pushed down in your front of your face. Because they put this cheap little band in the back of it. Like, what the freak is that going to do with all your hardware sitting up in the front? So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But I think it's still interesting. All, this, all I think it's very beautiful because when I was young, I always streamed the VR, the capability of going into games and playing all that stuff like that. So it's pretty cool and all, you know. But if you've been on higher forms of VR, Oculus is cool. It is very really nice. All I did when I was I didn't play much games. I played a few games in there, but mostly what I did was I just actually entertained the virtual art room. Oh man, I do miss that so much. That was. I think I'm gonna buy me another of those glasses. I do miss the virtual art room. I hope it's in there. But the virtual art room is beautiful. You can actually go into the paintings and the paintings come to life as you're in these paintings. It's amazing. It's so great if we have an art gallery. All right, let me see. Uh, let's get hooked up here because I got to get out the door. I got things that to do today.
knock that over. Me and the internet are on. Cables over here. All right, these are the power cords. Beautiful women, 4K demo. Getting up, I'll this up later. Oh, cool. I can be right next to the window, which is good. Sometimes it's hot in the areas over here. Let's put some beautiful skin tones on. I held off on buying all the things that I thought I was going to buy here. I'm still going to buy my train set. I want my train set. I've been, I've been putting my train set for a while. But the reason why I held off because, quite frankly, I do not want to carry to the next place. I mean, the move here, from here, from to fill it off here, from here, man, and then looking at all the stuff that I have, just made me think at the end of the day, do I really need all this stuff, honestly? I mean, gee whiz, I'm not accumulating all this stuff and it's just feel like it's just it's weighing me down. At the end of the day, I don't want it. I want to be happy with just, if I can just bring it down to just something simple, why not have to have all this stuff? <sighs> just too much stuff. Look at this, I'm gonna show you something. I'll pause this. Wait. much stuff just too much I'm tired of it I just basically want to keep things simple I love people who basically can strap their entire life on their back and walk away I love that there's all my collectibles all stacked in there pushed in there don't care got stacks of old magazines and all kinds of stuff in here most people would have this stuff on display right not me tired of it and in the other cat closet that's all stacked with collectibles you got three big closets in this place excuse me do you mind moving look at this joker thank god you guys don't drive then we got that closet in there that closet goes all the way back to about right there that's all filled with collectibles usually most people would take that stuff up and set it up and everything yeah I just keep it in there. I have no interest in ever taking it out. It's gonna stay right there in those boxes. And the reason why is because I'm tired of it. That stuff was a pain in the neck to move from here to there. I had to carry all that stuff from the vehicle over to here. I'm tired of it. I really just wanna keep things simple. I admire people who have everything they need and they have it compact. They can carry their whole entire life on their back. I, I admire people that can do that. They're not held down by material things. And that's the part, that's why I'm hitting that. That's why I'm on the fence about this whole getting a bigger house. Because I'm tired of it. I just want something that's simple and plain. That's what I want. I want something I can control. Not apartment I can't control. But I want something simple. That's what I want. Even the big screens don't even make me happy anymore. I like the big screen setup room, but... Yeah, I like this better. Simple. That's what I like. But the reason why I'm doing the giant screens in here, because most of the time when you see me do giant screens, they're all done basically for demonstration show. My main screens you will see me on are smaller screens, just like at the other house. 
had a master 250 in the back. I didn't go back there and watch that thing. I only used it for basically for demonstrations. 150 sitting on the deck, didn't go back and watch that thing. I only did it for demonstrations. The only screen I used was 126 to 100 inch. I used those, I like those. And as for uh, as for anything else, yeah. Even the screens I had upstairs that were huge. Never really used them. They're all used for demonstration screens. These screens in here, these big screens that are going in, they'll be for demo screens, and the one in there is a demo screen. But most likely, since the screen, the walls are going to be dark because they have the technology, I can put any size projector in here and shrink it to any screen size I want. Most likely, I'm probably going to watch on a screen that size. Which is going to be the same projector system I have set up here, which I'm going to use for that on my wall when I coat this whole thing in. But they're just for show. I like the smaller screens, I do. Yeah, we watch, I don't watch movies. Literally, I, it's rare that I watch a movie on my screen. It's very rare. Most of the time, I'm either just watching some documentary. Most of the time, yeah, it's yeah, documentaries. I love watching documentaries. Okay, where's this going to? This is going to the projector. Let me see. Let's get this done. Because I'm wasting time here. i got things I've got to do. I need to be out of here. i got things I've got to do. So let me get this finished because I should have been assembled already. Why are these following me around with these lights? Let's put you here.
Swifter or something and dust this stuff down. It's pretty dusty, it must go there. Where sometimes I'll be sitting there working on something, right? And I'll be complaining about wires and stuff like that. And then uh, the individual, we know they are, will come on like, look, my system's completely wireless. What about you? And I'm like, dude, are you challenged? That's my new line from now on. Just for, I'm just gonna mention anything else. Are you challenged? I'm 55 years old. I forgot I'm 55. I keep forgetting my age. I'm 55 years old. I think I would have had the experience of experience that one time or another. Oh wait, yeah, my speakers are all Bluetooth. So it's, grow up. It's kind of like, the, anytime I'm expecting to get an invite to race someone to the end of the block. Literally, I think that's what happened one day. Oh, like it shows me a picture of a hamburger at a restaurant, uh, newsflash. I have four certified chefs in my family. I've been to a couple of very nice restaurants before. Quite a lot of nice restaurants. As a matter of fact, I even had the liberty to have a thousand dollar slice of pizza one time. So yeah, I have four certified chefs in my family. So, I think I've had fancy food before. Not a big fan of it. I'd rather just have an everyday cheesesteak and I'd be happy about it, but I've got chefs in the family. So, you know, everybody one way or another has been to a real nice restaurant, got a chance to eat down, we've got a wine list, nothing new. But if someone is praising that as something big, nah, come on. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. And the same thing about the picture of the motorcycle. I have a friend who owns a, uh, um, a Chief, if you know what they are. They're a little bit beyond Harley Davidson's, if you know what those are. The Chiefs, yeah, that's a beautiful bike, by the way. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't know anything about those. Yeah, not do you guys, you would know. But that individual would show me the rocket pocket bike at the end of the day. Yeah, I know people actually own Harley Davidson, but I know actually a few people own a Chief, and that is in a 
very expensive and it's bike. But anyway, as I said before, I'm not into the whole trinket thing because I'm really not. No, like I said, I want to keep it nice and simple. I'm even tired of looking at that and I hate looking at that. Look at everything compact and small. I think I'm going to shrink my office. I am going to shrink my office by a lot. I'm going to fit my entire business right on the side of that wall right there. My entire business is going to run right there. I'm going to shrink everything. gratification of being recognized. I don't know. I do want, everybody has it in the day. I do want to be recognized for my technology. That's why I'm paying the money for showrooms to advertise my technology at another level. And that's why I'm working hard to hopefully one day get a chance to go to one of those shows and show off my technology. So I can show off to the certified screens, which those who do know we exist, but those who don't know we exist that black technology is alive. weather last couple of months I've had myself on a strict diet of one meal a day and the Twizzler diet if you haven't heard about that one my uh one of my uh my sister's boyfriend basically was a cab driver and he was a pretty heavy guy pretty heavy because the cab driver you know you don't some of them eat healthy they do some don't and he would eat a lot of healthy he's a pretty big guy even though he's 6'4 uh, basically um, got a little heavy and it can get dangerous so he went on this really strict diet it was insane it was Twizzlers and Snapple and he lost a lot of weight I mean he lost a little too much he was at down to about 150 pounds and I saw him I was like are you sick because that's the first thing that came to my mouth I'm used to seeing this really big big guy and I'm like are you sick are you okay and he's like no so I got tired of the weight Looked down one day in the shower and I couldn't even, I was barely seeing my feet. And I was like, no, nah, this had to change because I won't be here if I keep this up. So he went on this really strict diet and he ate nothing but, he didn't even go, he should have went to a strict dietitian. But it was crazy, but it actually works, it does. So I have my container of Twizzlers. And I've been, this is a five pound bag, so I'm a five pound half orchard, I've been going through this. And apple juice. Now, you do have to have some stuff in there in between. I wouldn't go up for circuits. He did. I do have watermelon that I like to eat, like a lot of fresh fruit, vegetables, tuna fish. I don't fry anything. Everything is either boiled or baked. I don't put any, I don't like to use any of the grease and fats and stuff like that. And you have to remember to drain all that off. And I'm allowed to have junk food once a month. That's it. Yesterday was my junk food day, but I didn't get anything yet. So I'm allowed once a month to have a hamburger or something from a fast food restaurant and that's it. That's what the same way I was doing when I was in training. So I got my weight down to where I need to get it at. And then basically my exercise and equipment and everything, I'll get my muscle mass back in no time at all, which I got some of it back a little bit, it's getting there. And then by summertime, I should be good. I'm working out three days a week. Sorry, three times a week, seven days a week. Reason why it's easier for me to do that, because I used to train. And when I used to train, and you're used to that, and you kind of pick up pretty quick, and 
just trying to, the hard thing about it is just getting that engine started after you haven't done it for so long. And I had to talk about somebody about how I don't like the pharmaceutical companies because the pharmaceutical companies will just basically constantly keep you medicated on stuff at the end of the day and it doesn't really cure anything. It's just basically a temporary fix. That's pretty much how I feel because they got me all this stuff at the end of the day. And they had me on prednisone. Prednisone, you got to watch out for that stuff. That stuff will make you gain weight extremely fast. And I'm sitting there thinking like I'm gaining all this weight and I can't exercise because my breathing's not correct yet. So I'm gaining weight and I have no way to burn it off because if I work out, I have these problems. I can't breathe and I take the machine and all that. So why would you put me on something that you know in the long run it's going to make me heavier? And being heavier is not going to help me with my breathing. How the freak does that even work? So then I, then sometimes you have to take matters into your own hands. You have to listen to your body. They want you to take that stuff every day. That's what they wanted me to take it. They wanted me to take it every single day. If I took that stuff every single day, I would have blew up to an easy 400 pounds in no time at all. I took it every day. I take it when my body tells me when I need it. That's when I take it. And when I go to the doctors, they expect for me to be on that inhaler every day. I haven't used my inhaler in two years. This is why you got to pray. And I'm not giving you medical advice at all. Don't take it as medical advice. But this is why prayer comes in handy because God knows your body better than anybody else. I haven't used my inhaler in two years. The only thing I use is my Simicor. And the Simicor, I'm supposed to take that twice a day, um, twice a day for the rest of my life. I use my, sometimes I take, I go a couple of months without using the Simicor and I'm good to go. When I leave from here, I work out, get my workout in, go shower, get dressed. Then I work out again a little bit, a light workout. And then after that, I take my lift down to the post office, go into the inner town. And then I walk from the post office, which is about 10 blocks to my family's place. And from my family's place, um, I go there and I chill and I call for a lift. And it comes six me out and it brings me back here. So I do my 10 block walk. I found out that I can literally, from distance where I'm at, I can literally walk to my family's house and then walk to the post office, which I'm gonna definitely do that. And I'll take one hit of that and I'm good, that's it. But if I had listened to them, what they wanted me to do, I'd be an easy four or 500 pounds easily. Cause that stuff makes you really, really hungry, it does. And on top of that, I'm so happy because, you know, God works everything out. A lot of people who basically mock what happened to me. You don't understand. That whole thing was a blessing. You're mocking God's blessing. That's why you're in the situation you're in now. You're probably, at the end of the day, we'll be praying to him to get out of these situations. But the situation that I went through, and I'm happy that my Lord put me through it, was that when I was living at the other house, my orders slowed down. They slowed down by a lot. I was even making a couple grand easy a day. And they slowed down by a lot so badly that I literally couldn't afford to pay the rent to live there. And I couldn't understand why that my Lord blessed me with this technology, slowed my orders down to the point where I looked at getting an eviction from this building, this place. And I'm thinking, man, I got my shop with everything set up here. Why are you slowing my orders down? What is going on? But again, never question God. He has a reason for everything that he does. So if the Lord allowed my orders, and this had nothing to do with Jamie or any of them at all. No, nothing. To do. They, they don't control God. God controls them. This basically because God has something for me. He needed me to do something. He needed me to get out of the situation that I am. If he continued to allow me to be able to make the money I was making, I'd still be at that property. I'd still be locked in that property because that property became my prison because I was not going anywhere. I wasn't doing anything. Really thought the entire world was still engulfed with COVID at a serious point where nobody was doing anything. So that place became my prison, literally became my prison. And on top of that, I told you, I found black mold on the property. But not only that, like I said, I was stuck there, really stuck there. So in my mind, I felt there was no place else and that's where I had to be at. But he changed all that. He went and he slowed down my orders. And then when it came time for me, your people were nice enough to release me out of the lease. Very nice. They let me go because they're very nice people at the end of the day. My orders pulled up. Orders came in. I made it easy. A couple of grand in no time at all. I made enough money to be able to move from there. I had the money to pay the U-Haul truck. I had the money to pay for the, um, for have my people come up. They came, people came up and moved me out for free. 
everything went smoothly. The Lord had me, I was out, supposed to be out of there by the 12th. The Lord had me out of there by the 11th. So for my orders to slow down next to nothing, my orders jumped to the roof, enough money made to be able to pay for the U-Haul truck, to pay for the storage unit, and able to do a little shopping when I got down here. Isn't God good? So he wanted me out of that building. Now that I'm out of that building, I feel so much better. I don't feel like I'm a prisoner anymore. I can get into a lift, I can go to a restaurant, I can go to a store, I can do this, I can do that. Those are things I couldn't do when I was trapped in that place. I got a name for it, they call it, um, I think it's called agoraphobia. Agoraphobia? Agoraphobia, when a person's actually in prison in their own home, they can't leave. And that's what I was suffering from when I was in there. But Lord broke me out of all that. Now I feel fantastic, you know what I mean? My breathing's 10 times better. I feel much healthier, you know what I mean? I can, I'm exercising more, I'm eating right. So yeah, he blessed me big time. And my orders picked up right through the roof when I got back over to my sister's place. I was sitting there, I was laying in the laundry room and the devil tried to go in and mess with my head by saying, look at you, you went from a big house to a laundry room and this, that and the other, but God always blesses. And look where I'm at right now. And then I'm gonna be in a house or whatever I choose to get at the end of the day. But like I said, God is amazing. So when people were sitting there taunting me, saying at the end of the day that, hey, you're stuck here, you can't go here, God's not going to bless you anymore in 2023, don't say stuff like that. You know how dangerous that is at the end of the day? You're going to put words in God's mouth, or you lost your mind. So now, as I sat in that little laundry room, the Lord gave me the ability and the knowledge to obtain my licenses, to my LLCs, things I needed for my business, to move on to the next stage on where I'm at now. And my money, well, my blessings have been coming in and they have been absolutely amazing. My customers have been absolutely amazing. And I've made more than enough to be able to pay my rent easily here with no problem whatsoever and anything else I would need. But in the process while I'm here, he's also given me common sense to spend my money more wisely on what I need and not what I want. That's what I love about the Lord. Because at the end of the day, we really actually don't know what we're doing. We need him for guidance. So when everyone was laughing at, thinking I was being kicked out, no, God was working his perfect plan. So in your face, Satan, and I mean the devil himself. When people, at the end of the day, if you allow the devil to act up and carry on through you like that, yeah, you are serving him. You don't serve God. These people I find quite interesting. Introducing. I'm not ashamed to tell that testimony because I'm not ashamed of my Lord. Just like I'm not ashamed to go into a restaurant and pray for the blessing of my food. I'm not ashamed of that. Why would I? Where, where do you think all my stuff comes from? Everything I have in here comes from God. So that's why sometimes when you're going through something crazy in life, you have to sit down and you have to remember that he has control over all things. It has now gotten to a point that I've been through so much Christian boot camp through my Lord, it refined me. And I had to go through really rough situations in my life in order to learn that he's always there for me, that I don't worry anymore. I don't have that thought anymore. It's not there anymore. Just like I have the confidence that my technology will work because God's hand is behind it. I don't have those worries anymore. I don't have those worries that this is not going to work and that's going to work. As long as God has control of it, it's going to work. That's why I have the confidence I have in my products. Anything that I put my mind to and I ask for his blessings and if he says it's okay, it's going to work. I'm not worrying about if my business slows down. I'm always going to have the money to pay my rent, always going to have the money to pay my bills. I'm always going to have the money for things that he allows me to have. If it's under his blessing, I'm always going to have it no matter what. I will never be kicked out of any place ever in life, ever, because my Lord is always there to have my back. And I learned that in that situation when we didn't have the money to be able to support the household anymore. And I felt that the Lord was basically forsaking me and he wasn't forsaking me. He was taking me someplace better. He was getting me out of that prison that I was stuck in and I was afraid to walk out that door and go someplace and do something because I was trapped there. I was a prisoner there. And now look at me. In a few minutes, when I get done all this, I'm going out to a nice little, I'm gonna take care of my business first, <clears throat> meet it with some friends, and I'm going over to a nice little restaurant and have something to eat. That's the first thing that blew my mind when I first left the house and I had that sign of relief just 
relief, just something just lifted off my shoulders. And when I got back, when I got over here in Allentown, they stopped over to get some food. And I had my mask in my pocket and Lord said, don't put it on. And I didn't put it on. I walked right in there without the mask. This person was terrified to have people around him walked into a restaurant because the Lord sat there and said, you don't need it. And I walked right in there, sat down, had some food and ate. Heart rate was perfect because usually I would go through panic attacks and anxieties. None, nothing triggered off. I was calm as can be. Walked out of there like it wasn't nothing. Even went to a couple other places after that. Now, I don't tempt the Lord your God because you're not supposed to do that. But if the Lord tells me, put it in your pocket. Don't worry about it. That's what I did. I walked in there. And keep in mind, I never had COVID. Never had it. Ever. That's why I said God is amazing. Now, when I get over here with my sisters, things, I made the money to be able to get over here. But then things started to slow down again. And I'm thinking like, Lord, if things are slowing down like this, then how am I going to be able to support myself when I get the place? Because, you know, you're living with your sister, you know, I'm not paying any rent. I don't have any bills, you know what I mean? And any money I make, you know what I mean? It's pretty much, you know, a lot of money due to the fact that I don't have any expenses. So I'm thinking like, how am I going to move here? How am I going to be able to uh, to maintain this place? And this is much less than what I was maintaining before. But things slow down, and then things, boom, picked up again. I got my loan kicked in right away. I had the down payment because I came over. I had no, really no money at all. So my loan kicked in. I got $3,500 out of my loan. They approved me right from the door for the loan. And then my order started picking up. I had about a couple thousand, not about five or six grand in my account already. And I was able to go in and start looking for places. Which is amazing. I told you. And even the Lord protected me as I was looking at places at the same time. A lot of places I saw that looked really nice on the outside, but on the inside, they were horrifying. And the Lord saw all that and redirected me to a place that I felt that was suitable for me. So I ended up here. Now, yeah, I do complain. Yeah, Christians, we do complain. We're not supposed to. We should be happy for everything we get. I do complain while I'm here. I'm not used to being in an apartment. Just never not used to it. So, you know, now I'm glad that he blessed me. And one the thing about this, man, I'll tell you, when you really think about this, he could have gave me, usually my loans, I get like five, six, or $7,000. When I got like $17,000 alone. loan. Sometimes it can be more. But this time I only got 35. And I'm thinking, why did I only get 35? Because, you know, I was making them concerned about a good amount of money. So, like, I only got 35. Why? And then he gave me 35 because money, I got to pay back these loans. And the bigger the loan, the longer I got to pay back something. So, pretty much when I put down for my loan payback, I put down 30% because I want to pay back as fast as possible. So, um, with that being said, with him giving me 35, that means I have less to pay off. And that means now that once my 30, my 35 is paid off, my, I, I go back to keeping my 30%, which means I keep more of my intake now, which means my loan's about paid off. I got about $1,000 left on my loan, that's it. Once that's paid off, then I go back to collecting my full amount. And with the rent over here being only $1,400, that's it. And I have pretty much no utilities. That should give me enough to save up some serious money before I kick in for my second, for my uh, my 11th loan. I, got, I had 11 loans through PayPal. So that'll give me the option to either lease a place or put a down payment for one easily. So like I said, you know, God worked everything out. Man, he worked everything out. And I you can't see his perfect plan. You have to just sit there and you have to wait. Like I said, when my order slowed down at the house and then everything spread back up again, or put everything back the way it is, he just wants to see if you have that faith. You have to believe in him. Through all the taunting that I get from the naysayers and the devil himself, basically you have to have, I had to have that faith at the end of the day that God had my back. And I watched him down through time have my back. Why would I doubt him now? But it happens. You will doubt from time to time. Now, how's my, my income here? It's actually quite nice. The Lord has blessed me quite nicely here. And will continue to bless me. I keep my faith in him. So that's why I said at the end of the day, when it comes to you naysayers, when you make predictions, when you say that God is going to take from me, that you don't know God at the end of the day. You don't have a right to even make that statement. As a matter of fact, you need to get on your knees right now and repent and ask for forgiveness because you never put anything in God's mouth at the end of the day. So, you know, you can't take from me. 
You can try all the little devious schemes you can possibly think of. You cannot take one thing off my table. My Lord will always bless me to have what I need. And in the process of following the devil and following these schemes, you have now yourself will have the same thing you tried to do to me. Try to take bread off my table. Bread now will be taken off your table. So yeah, see how see how crazy things get now, see how interesting things are? The very same people who try to destroy me at the end of the day, the very same people who tried to take from me, now it'll be taken from you. Except for the difference is that my table will remain with bread. Yours will not. You don't you don't you don't win anything in that. You don't. I don't know why people even try. You know. Even worse about the bread being snatched from your table, most thing you better worry about is your salvation more than anything else. Because some of them were sending me messages like 666 and Mark of the Beast and all kinds of stuff, questioning my Christianity. You got to talk to God at the end of the day about that one. Because again, God forbid, if you don't wake up the next day or you walk outside one day and a car jumps the curb and you get hit by it and God decides to call you back, well, you better be to show that basically you did what was right on the earth before he called you back or you're going to somebody's house. Anything could happen to you. I could not come back the next day. I could walk out there and I could be going the next day. Or I can go out there right now and not come back out the same, same day. When I, If something happens to me and I die, I'm not worrying about death. I'm not worrying about going to hell. I know where I'm going at the end of the day. I'm going to see my Lord. That's where I'm going. I don't fear death. That means I go home. That's how I see death. I go home to see his face. If you're afraid of death, then you're not ready, you're not, you're not saved. Because people that are saved and are afraid are not afraid to die. We welcome death because again, we're going home. I got no more of this to worry about. No more pain, no more suffering. You don't understand. No bills, even though I don't have any. Just nothing to worry about but to serve God and see his face. I would give up all of this. If I would basically, if I was a millionaire or a billionaire at the end of the day, and the Lord said, hey, you can have all this and more, or you can come see me and give it up. I'm out. Lord, I wouldn't be here for it. But while I'm here, you know what I mean? I do what he tells me to do. And I serve him the way he tells me to be, how I serve him, he needs me to serve him. Yes, Christians are gonna make mistakes. Christians are gonna get upset. Christians are gonna get angry. At the end of the day, they are trapped in a cursed body at the end of the day. We were sitting there, oh my goodness, he's talking about the Lord. Let's leave the room. Yeah, only people who leave the room, Christians at the end of the day, don't mind talking about the Lord. They can talk about God all day long. And that's what I love about them. On the other hand, people who do not serve God, don't want to hear it and if you don't want to hear it and it bothers you then that means you serve the beast because only the devil can't stand hearing about the Lord you don't hear angels saying oh heck no don't talk about God I don't want to talk about God no no don't talk about him I don't want to hear this only the devil says that and somebody says are you calling me the devil well yeah because he's the only one that doesn't want to talk about the Lord at the end of the day. I don't want to hear it. What are we doing with all this cable taco? Oh, you know, you got to fight my fish. Fighting his fish. Uh-oh. He's doing battle with the fish. Can I get him on camera? There he's down there fighting the fish. Fighting him for Haruko? For Haruko, 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 Haruko? For Haruko? Haruko is girlfriend. Haruko, Haruko. He's doing battle with the fish. He's doing battle with the fish. Serious battle with the fish. That's a ser Every day, it's a very serious battle with the fish. It's very aggressive with his fish. Look at those eyes. Are you fighting the fish, Taco? Are you fighting it? Are you fighting it for Haruko? Haruko, Haruko, Haruko? He's got the ears pulled back, got the whiskers pushed in. Yes, that's a very serious battle. I'm going to get him another one. He needs better training. I'm going to get him four or five of them. We have to do battle with four or five opponents at the same time. For oh, Hulk. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love it. Oh, that's some fun this summer. I'm getting one of those 
uh, electric unicycles. And yes, I did ride a unicycle way back in the day before we had them electric. We had them pedaled. That's how they were when I was coming up when I was a kid. And we did all kinds of crazy stuff. Back then, going downstairs, jumping over stuff, going over seesaws. Yep. It's the same thing. And balance. Just had a motor attached to this one. We're probably going to do a little practice. Yeah. Now we gotta play, we got no choice. Alright, almost about touched up. I'll let that play. Figure out later on. I don't know which one that goes to. All right, this one I gotta figure out later on. I don't know which one that goes to. 
Alright. This is the core to what? This is the core to oh this is the core to the massage chair. Alright, leave that there. Extension cord, I'm gonna need this. So we got the main piece moved. The office had to be moved over there because it was right in the way. My cat's were having this battle over there. So now we got that whole section freed up. That's freed up. What we got to move over here is easy. We just shipped all that stuff over here. I'll point to where we're at right now. All this stuff right here, we'll ship that over here. We got the walls exposed, ready to paint. And then we got to do something with this mess right here so we got to clean this up so I'm going to put a shelf system in I'm going to put these in smaller cases micro cases and we're going to basically line them all along here that's all we need wireless keyboard and mouse you can fit everything in this whole section right here get rid of the table and all that can go and uh, yeah we can get this done and get this finished this room finished and done for demonstrations and then we'll get done. This room is going to be mostly lights out. It's going to be a lights out demonstration area. Um, we're going to do the whole entire ceiling and all that cool stuff. We had the ceiling done. We're going to do this whole section. It's going to be nothing. mostly for a wall to wall display for lights out. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Got to go. I got to get out of here and get out the door. I got some things I got to take care of that are very important today. Got to go. Thank you all and God bless.